And then, uh, if, if that makes sense, what would we do next? Um, we're going to deprogram it. But now we want the PCC. Yeah, now we're basically done. This is what PCC operates on. PCC operates on this. Uh, we don't worry about this mechanism. We'll just memorize that PCC turns an alcohol into an aldehyde or a ketone. Is this the one that makes it go all the way? This is the one that makes it go all the way. Sure. The well, first of all, was this an oxidation or a reduction? I missed that. Oxidation. It wasn't. Because an oxidation means... Well, it wasn't on the... Right it, this is the, what it was on our final. Can sometimes an oxidation be considered a Williams synthesis as well? I read a Williams and ether synthesis. Well, I don't think people would usually use the term oxidation there. Because in a, a Williams and ether synthesis, you're replacing one electronegative element with another electronegative element. So there, you haven't really changed the oxidation state so very much. From, but I, I read you can go from an alcohol to a ketone using a Williams synthesis. That's... Uh, and doesn't I put that sound on right. Final, so I just wondered. That doesn't quite sound right to me. So, so it's an oxidation from alcohol to carbonyl. Yeah. yeah. That's why? What I wrote down. I don't know why though. Yeah, it's oxidation. Okay. Well, Good. the easiest way to remember that. <laughs> <Sorry. yeah. laughs> Got it right. Actually, students have a hard time. Count electrons on the carbon, right? He gave us a way to do it. I just couldn't remember how to do it. Students have a hard time remembering, telling whether something's an oxidation or a reduction. But it actually, shouldn't be hard. An oxidation forms more bonds to oxygen. To me, okay. that's a very common sense. That's an oxidation idea. forms more bonds to oxygen, and a reduction forms fewer bonds to oxygen. Maybe a slightly better definition is oxidation forms more bonds to oxygen or other electronegative elements, but usually you're just focusing on the oxygen. Well, in this case, we started with one bond to oxygen, and we ended up with two bonds to oxygen. So it should be straightforward that this is an oxidation, or we're forming more bonds to oxygen. Now, um, the problem with oxidations is that you could over-oxidize and form a carboxylic acid. Yeah. Can you see why this is called overoxidation? Because now we have three bonds to oxygen. Okay. All right. And can you see now why aldehydes and ketones are considered very similar functional groups? Because they both have two bonds to oxygen. Mm -hmm. So depending on what you're starting with, PCC will give you an aldehyde or a ketone by simply putting in one extra bond to oxygen. Now, there's a bunch of other um, oxidizing agents which are dangerous to use because in some situations they would overoxidize to a carboxylic acid, which is rarely what you're trying to make this term. So all the oxidizing agents of alcohols have chromium in them. All of the oxidizing agents that you've learned this term have chromium in them, including PCC. We're not drawing the structure here, but one of these Cs stands for chromium. So this has chromium too. Um, but the only one that you've learned that doesn't have any danger of overoxidizing is PCC. So that's the safest one to use. Um, you've learned about other oxidizing agents, maybe like sodium dichromate or chromic acid. Um, pretty much anything that you've seen with chromium could be an oxidizing agent. The problem is that those overoxidize primary alcohols to carboxylic acids. But that's the one we learned then. We have Which to know one that overoxidizes. Yeah. We do? Yeah. Which I, one is the one that goes all the way up to There's one in the chapter. I don't and remember. I don't know which one it is. It's probably this one, H2CRO4. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It doesn't have the only other one I see coming in. I know there's one we have to know. That goes right. all the way. Yeah. You said that. It's in the list of reactions, meaning it's in that chapter. Because PCC is what you're supposed to use to prevent that. Mm. Yeah, so they mentioned uh, chromic acid as one of the reagents here. Yeah. Well, this is not PCC, so this will overoxidize a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. Yeah. Um, that, that's not an issue with secondary alcohols, okay. um, just with primaries. You can see, um, you can see this. So what did we start with here, a primary or a secondary alcohol? Secondary. Secondary. Notice that the only way to oxidize something is to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. If we're going to form a, a new bond between this carbon and this oxygen, we have to break a bond. Otherwise, we'll break the octet rule. It's hard to see because this was a hidden hydrogen. But notice how this hydrogen is gone in this picture here. And if we had not had a hydrogen here, there would be no way to oxidize this because we would break the octet rule. Okay. So notice there's no way that this can be over-oxidized because it has no more hydrogens. There's no way that this could be overoxidized because there's no more carbon hydrogen bonds on the number seven. That's why there's no danger of overoxidizing when you start with a secondary alcohol because it doesn't have enough hydrogen. Since it only starts with one hydrogen, it can only be oxidized one time. But suppose we start with a primary alcohol. Uh, then it can go twice. Okay. Well, then that can be oxidized once to an aldehyde and then you have the by breaking one of the carbon hydrogens. Okay. But there's still another carbon hydrogen. So if we use the wrong oxidizing agent, that'll oxidize again to give us a carboxylic acid. 
So as usual, if we understand the mechanism a little bit, we don't need to memorize the ideas. They, they make sense. Now we can see why primary alcohols can over-oxidize to carboxylic acids and secondary alcohols can't. Primary alcohols can oxidize twice because they start with two hydrogens. Secondary alcohols can only oxidize once because they start with only one hydrogen on the, on, the, on the carbon that's getting attacked. All right, so this primary alcohol case is when we have to be careful and not over-oxidize. Well, the safest thing is just to stick with PCC. If you stick with PCC, you will only ever oxidize once. If you start with PCC, you will only oxidize once. Any of the other oxidizing agents will oxidize twice if they can. PCC will only oxidize once. The other chromium oxidizing agents will oxidize twice if there's enough carbon-hydrogen bonds. So in this case, actually, we there's two correct either. answers. Yeah. In, this, in this case, either, either D or F would be, would be correct. F. Either D or F would be correct here because we started with the secondary alcohol, so there's no danger of over-oxidation here. There's no way this could have continued oxidizing anyway because there's no carbon-hydrogen bond. So here there was actually more than one possible answer. But the safest thing is just to stick with PCC. So that's what we did. So these are some real important reactions. Okay, so um, let's summarize some key things here. First of all, you've got to know what PCC does. Again, a lot of people think that PCC does the reverse of what it does. A lot of people think that PCC attacks aldehydes and ketones and makes alcohols. Well, no. It attacks alcohols to make aldehydes and ketones. We have to be very clear in our mind. That should be easy to remember if we recognize that this has chromium, so it's an oxidizing um, agent. That means that it's going to introduce an extra bond to oxygen. So we must be going from one bond to oxygen to two bonds to oxygen. Now, how would we have come up with this in the first place? Well, retrosynthesis is a good technique here because you've only learned two ways to make aldehydes and ketones. One way to make aldehydes and ketones is PCC and maybe other chromium reagents. And what's the other way that you've learned to make aldehydes and ketones? We've already used that in a previous reaction today, although people don't often think of that. We've already... Excellent. Most people don't think about that. Doesn't ozonolysis make aldehydes and ketones too, right? Yeah. We emphasized how ozonolysis is useful for cleaving carbon-carbon bonds. But it does that by making, um, by making uh, aldehydes and ketones. Um, yeah, in fact, if you look at the first example that we did, we were making two aldehydes. The very first example was cleaving a carbon-carbon bond to make two aldehydes. But I think it was pretty clear that this was not an ozonolysis problem. Because if it was ozonolysis, we'd be cleaving this bond. All right, so it shouldn't have been hard to come up with PCC. PCC is really the only candidate then for making this aldehyde or ketone once we reject ozonolysis. So retrosynthesis is a good technique here. We need PCC. That means we have to have an alcohol. And then you saw that we needed the alcohol on the less substituted carbon. And then you just have to have memorized that this is the reagent that would put it on the less substituted carbon. And it looks like you also have memorized that if we had used reagent C, that would have put the alcohol on the more substituted carbon. Okay, good. Does that make sense? All right.